Church of Emacs. <laughs> I bless your computer, my child. <laughs> Now, I would like to suggest that if you are here from the press photographing, that you not provide a photo of St. Ignatius, because after two hours of talk, you understand I have some serious ideas, even if I give you some comic relief. <laughs> but if that's the first thing people see, they won't quite under, they'll be misled. Anyway, Emacs started out as a text editor which became a way of life for many users because it was an extensible text editor and people extended it so much that the users could do all their computing work without ever exiting Emacs. And then it became a church with the launch of the news group alt.religion.emacs. Today in the church of Emacs we have a great schism between several rival versions of Emacs. And we also have saints, but fortunately no gods. Instead of gods, we worship an editor. <laughs> to be a member of the Church of Emacs, you must recite the confession of the faith. You must say, there is no system but GNU, and Linux is one of its kernels. <laughs> In the Church of Emacs, we have a religious ceremony called the Fubar Mitzvah, <laughs> in which a new hacker, perhaps of 13 years old, stands in front of other hackers and recites important parts of the system source code. <laughs> we also have the cult of the Virgin of Emacs. The Virgin of Emacs is any woman who has not yet learned how to use Emacs. <laughs> and taking her Emacs virginity is considered to be a blessed act in the Church of Emacs. Uh, the Church of Emacs has certain advantages compared with other churches that I won't mention. For instance, to be a saint in the Church of Emacs does not require celibacy. <laughs> so if you have been searching for a church to be saintly in, you might want to consider ours. <laughs> but it does require living a life of moral purity. You must exorcise whatever evil proprietary operating systems have possessed computers under your control or set up for your use, and then install a wholly free operating system, <laughs> and then only install free software with and on the system. If you make this vow and you live by it, then you too will be a saint, and you too will have the right to wear a halo <laughs> if you can find one because they don't make them anymore. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me whether in the Church of Emacs the use of the other editor, VI, is a sin. <laughs> it's true that VI, VI, VI is the editor of the beast. <laughs> but <laughs> using a free implementation of VI is not a sin, it's a penance. <laughs> And sometimes people ask whether my Halo is really an old computer disk. <laughs> this is no computer disk, this is my Halo. But it was a computer disk in a previous existence. <laughs> so thank you very much.
So now I would like to answer questions. And there is an interpreter available in case someone wants to ask a question in Polish. Please, uh, by the way, when you speak, if you're speaking English to me, please speak loud and slowly because I'm a bit hard of hearing. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't hear you very well. Please pronounce your consonant. You mean which software, pro which free programs are most convenient? Sorry, the best Linux? <laughs> you, mean the best, you mean the best distribution of GNU slash Linux? <laughs> because Linux by itself won't run. <laughs> Linux is one component of an operating system, but it won't run by itself. You, if you install Linux alone, it's useless. You need the rest of the system also. And that's GNU plus Linux. Now, from my point of view, I can only recommend the distributions which are entirely free software. And they include GNUsense and Ututo, U-T-U-T-O, and Blag, uh, and Treescale. The list is in GNU.org. You don't need to write it down. Look at GNU.org and you can find the list of free GNU slash Linux distributions. It's not. Debian, first of all, ha its servers have the non-free section and the contrib section, which promotes a lot of non-free programs. And also, in Debian's version of Linux, the kernel, there is non-free software. You see, Torvalds, the developer of Linux, has never been in favor of defending users' freedom. And some years ago, he began allowing non-free programs to be put into the source code of Linux. And some of them are not even really source code. They're disguised as source code. They're actually executable programs in the form of a long series of numbers. So, in free distros, we have to get rid of those. Uh, the free BSD license is a free software license, and it's compatible with the GNU GPL. If you want to use it, uh, it's not wrong. But it's not as good in terms of protecting the user's freedom as the GNU General Public License or GNU GPL. I'm not interested in opening or closing source. Those are terms that refer to open source, which is an idea I disagree with. Now, I, di I also disagree completely with what you said. The freedom does not include the freedom to subjugate others. I'm sorry. That's not part of my definition of freedom. <laughs> 